It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is Wayne Fetterman, actor, author, comedian, musician, and everything else. What's going on? Hey, is this Mike? It is. Ah, oh, good. It's good to hear your voice. I'm happy to be on the, the movie raid. I, let's go. Are you a movie buff? Why do you Why are you even calling it the movie raid? What's the deal behind it? Everything about movie. Everything in general. Behind the scenes, everything about it. Your opinions and everything else. Why raid? Because all the movies raid in. They raid in. They right, raid uh, in. I'm not quite following, but I'm going to go with You know how, like, SWAT teams break indoors? So are you, like, a movie buff, or do you collect movies? How does it all work? What's going on down there in Missouri? Do you collect movies? Not just for the pure sake of collecting, no. No. So you just like movies, or what? Love them? Indeed. Want to see them? Everything that? about them. Well, so who's your favorite movie director? I'm just kind of curious to see for... Uh, honestly, I couldn't really tell you. There's just... Uh, I'll, I'll name at least one. John Carpenter, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Those are just top two, right. at least. Uh, George Romero, of course. Hold on a second. I thought you were going to name one. I'd name a few. Oh, a few. Okay. Okay. So you got Carpenter, Kubrick, and what was your third one? George A. Romero. Ah! Dawn of the Dead guy. Indeed. Yeah. So, I got. Who, what's your favorite Kubrick movie? Because there's a big... Out here, I live out in Los Angeles. I just moved back. I was working for Jimmy Fallon in New York, and now I'm back here. And there's this huge exhibit about Stanley Kubrick at the uh, museum. Uh, what's your favorite Kubrick movie? You know, I, I'm going to say it. And it, it, in the past, it's had a, bad reviews and good reviews. And I still say it's a really good film. And that would be Full Metal Jacket, of course. Oh. Jacket. Full Metal Jacket, and uh, even St- Stephen King wouldn't like this, but uh, The Shining. Yeah. That's another one of your guys, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So not Clockwork Orange, not Dr. Strangelove. Have you ever seen The Killing or The Killer's Kiss, like his early stuff? Yes. Oh, I can't name all the greats there. I'm only giving you a couple. No, I know, I know, I know. Uh, that's interesting. No, I, I, like, I like the Kubrick. I like him a lot. I just saw Barry Lyndon for the first time, though. On the big screen at oh, yeah. the, uh, we have a theater out here called the Cinerama Dome. Have you ever come out to visit? No, I can't, I can't even get out of the state, man. I'm too broke. Get out of, <laughs> cannot get over. And why is that? Why why can't you get out? Because I ain't got a job until now, a real job. Just writing and directing <laughs> movies. No, 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 not movies. Movies like on this big screen. I'm talking about audio. All right, all right. So, all right. I'm not quite following again, but I'm gonna try to. I thought you said you like to write and direct movies. No, uh, audio. Well, um, no, but anyway, about Barry Lyndon. So I see, I've not seen it uh, before, except at, at this big movie theater called the Cinerama Dome, and there's only been a few movies made in Cinerama, which was that, you know, I guess it was a late 60s, I mean, early 60s film process, and so uh, I was very excited, very excited to see that movie. But, um, but it's good to talk to you. I love talking to other film buffs. I get a big kick out of it. Oh, yeah? Are you one? Mm-hmm. Couldn't be bigger. Good. Give me give me a year in the 70s. 1985. No, I said the 70s. Well, I said the 80s. I like that. I like the 80s better. You like the 80s better? All right. I love it. <laughs> 1985, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Nice. Let's see. I'm trying to think what won Best Picture. I know in 1984. What won Best, what won best Picture in 85? Mm, Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think. I know in 86, Platoon won. Mm-hmm. 85. Did you ever see that uh, Oliver Stone movie? Uh, what You talking about Platoon? Yeah. Platoon. Platoon. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like what it. What do you think? I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not, uh, you like it not as much as Carpenter stuff. No, I'm not saying, like, I'm the number one fan type thing. I do like his work, yes. Yeah, so uh, I just saw a documentary about his, I'm going to say it's a 1979 movie called Halloween. Have you seen that one? Indeed. Yeah, that is a, that one is a good one. You know, they shoot it, they shot that thing, like, right around the corner from where I live, even though they made it look like, is it Illinois, or where is that, where is that, where they pretend that movie takes place? I don't know, I'm thinking Connecticut for some reason. Connecticut? No. I don't I, know I, why, but <laughs> something was... I'll, I'll double check, but it something was, like, was there, but I'm not saying it is. Job of that. I thought that was a masterpiece. And you know what's impressive about that movie to me is the uh, he also not only directs the movie, but wrote the score to it as well. Yes. Yeah. I and think that's one of the classic scores of all time. Well, later on in the years, uh, you know, as the uh, se- sequels progressed, uh, he kept on making more themes of that, some remix ones. and I mean, it's huh? the same theme, but they really love the original theme to the first film. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, I felt like 
like the theme is almost in the in this very similar like to Steven Spielberg's film Jaws. Yes. If, like the music was almost like a character in the movie. Like that's how identifiable it was for me. Uh, I mean, I know you're more into 80s movies. Well, how do you feel uh, about on sound on scores? Do you want to have a pure raw score like you hear mainly bands from every era in new bands in soundtrack? Well, not in Quentin Tarantino's movie. No, no, no. But I'm saying there's a lot of newer ones that do, though. Well, that's been going on since American Graffiti when they started oh, of using course. like a lot of pop music, and that's yeah. When, when did Graffiti come out? Like '73, maybe something like that. So, uh, I mean, that's been going on a while. Where they they use pop music. Oh yeah, but some some of the, there's a lot of songs that fit really well with the film, and there's just some that's like they're just thrown in there that's not even in the movie. Wait, say that again. You're saying a. a there's a song that's in the movie that's not in the movie that's thrown in but not in the movie. No, there there are songs like if you go out and buy a soundtrack and there's a track a track or two or more that are like bonus tracks that are not even in the film or even that's. I see what you're saying. I yeah, yeah. Thrown onto this the uh, the soundtrack. I mean, an actual soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, because also soundtrack could be the track of the film. You know, let's say like The Crow with Brandon Lee. Yes, very familiar with it. Or you know, even uh, tracks, uh, bands like with Filter. Filter fits great with a lot of soundtracks. Filpis, did you say? Filter, the band. Oh, Filter, okay. I, sorry. Yeah, I know. Do you know um, film last year, or two years ago, with the Chemical Brothers did a phenomenal soundtrack oh, called, yeah, called yeah. Hannah? You see that Hannah. thing? It's kind of Hannah we're talking about. I, I do know the Chemical Brothers, yes. Yeah, they did. They, it was really good. It was a, it was a story. Hannah, you know, just a classic. Uh, she, they create this kind of like super, this girl who has like super ability to fight and stuff. Her dad was, uh, I don't know, like a CIA guy or something that had to live in the woods. And uh, so Hannah has to kind of live by her woods, wits, but the soundtrack was phenomenal by those guys. But, uh, yeah, I love talking movies. Bring it on! Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of, what do you think of this year's crop? Did you uh, enjoy anything? Did you see Silver Linings Playbook? Did you see, uh, Life of Pi? No, I can't say that I have. But there seems some promising ones coming out, like, uh, Warm Bodies, for example. Warm Bodies just opened to here. Yeah, I mean, it seems an actual really good zombie film. You know how a lot of zombie films have been released upon release upon release? They just treat zombies like they're just cartoons. And just, okay, let's chop its head off. Let's make it into this. And not actually have a survival-type feel to it anymore. Oh, I gotcha. Um, yeah, that looks like a good, it's like a love story. It's for yeah. kids, though, right? It's a teenager thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's I don't want to say Twilight, because I'd probably get ridiculed for that. But uh, it, it seems something, a, a different twist to the to the whole zombification, you know? Yeah, no, it got, it's getting pretty good reviews. There's uh, that site, Rotten Tomatoes. You ever go there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, just, I call it tomatoing. That's what my little <laughs> thing which means, uh, at, I think it's tomatoing at 76 right now, which is pretty good for that kind of movie. I may, I may even go see it. It just opened on Friday, so it's, it's Sunday, and we've been involved with the Super Bowl a little bit. I know it's talking sports in a movie show. It's no big deal. Sport, you know, Super Bowl is only the biggest television event of the year. You do not have to tune in. No, it's not for me. You do not have to be part of that at all. Do you want to know who won, or do you even know who was in it? Uh, didn't the Ravens win? The Ravens won, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it just happened a few minutes ago. Yeah. Not so, so um, but uh, no, no, I like, I like these, uh, like movies. So give me a question. A question. Let's see here. Well, since you performed in a lot of television and between like voiceover as well on screen and everything else, do you think actors should go toward the television sequel era right now? Since it's booming right now, I mean, really booming. Television sequel era. Like TV shows, TV movies. Um, yeah, I think actors should work on television if they can. I think that's not a bad, not a bad way to make a living. Well, I mean, it, they got a whole new, whole strewn full of new TV shows coming out, and there's a lot of big hits out there. And I mean, it's just spreading all over the place like there's nothing. And of course, you got the reality shows and everything. But do you think actors should go toward that right now, as far as you know, financially wise? Well, it's uh, you know, I mean, at the top of the television game, I know some. People are making, you know, $100,000 an episode to be on television. I think it's a pretty good way to make a ridiculous amount of money for an actor. And to me, I think there's a lot of phenomenal writing on television right now. There's a couple shows in particular, I would say. Uh, there's one called Breaking Bad, which is on cable, that yep. I think is really good. There was one that just ended up on, uh, just finished up on HBO about a year and a half ago called The Wire. I thought that was 
spectacular writing, and there's one, another one on AMC called Mad Men. I don't know if you know any of these shows, but they're, I feel like the writing is really, really good on these. Well, you ever seen The Walking Dead or Sons of Anarchy? Uh, no, I haven't seen either one of those, but I've heard, I mean, Sons of Anarchy is getting like the biggest ratings of uh, any cable show, I think, ever. Oh, yeah. It's definitely got a strong story to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I heard both those shows are good. So, I mean, I try, I, I watch more movies than television, to be honest with you. Mm. So, I'm more of a movie buff than a, than a television guy. But, yeah, I know both those shows. Uh, but you don't think actors should be heading towards television? or which, I don't understand your point. Well, some actors are are usually in the television era. I mean, they've played in a lot of films, but they're going toward the cop-type shows. They're going toward the drama-type shows. And the question is, uh, do you think it's just something that kind of is getting more financial than it, making an actual movie now? I mean, it's 2013. Well, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I do think... With the exception of the big stars, yeah, you make more money probably doing a television series than you do a movie. But don't forget, you're doing a number of episodes of those. Mm -hmm. The movie is just, you know, the one and you hope it's a hit. You know, those, those people at the top that make millions. But for the average actor, you know, those television shows are, that, that's a pretty good way to go. No, because when you make a movie, it's like you just have to hope and hopefully you get a, someone to pick it up and hopefully you get more cash to make another project or sequel off the previous project. Yeah, no doubt no doubt about it. And I mean, it's tough. It is tough. But uh, I, I just, I don't know. For me, and I know your, your podcast is called The Movie Raid, I just like the experience of being in a movie theater more than I like sitting in front of a television set. And I'm not denigrating television in any way. It's just for me, I just like that experience a little better going back to watching movies when I was a kid or even watching you know movies this year like uh, like I said earlier like I've seen all the Oscar nominated movies Silver Linings you know Django Unchained and Lincoln and Argo and Life of Pi and all of those movies and I just really like seeing them in the theater I get a big kick out of it but I would think there might be more money in, in television but I'm, I'm not really trying to like my goal of my, my career when I started wasn't like let's see how much money I could make my goal was more like oh I'd like to try everything I'd like to try movies I'd like to try television I've been in commercials I've done voiceover I've done extra work I don't know if you know the movie Black Sunday that was the first movie I was in as an extra as a kid and then uh, you know I was even in a couple MTV music videos I like doing it all I really like doing it all I really and besides you know and then just doing my stand up and running around ukulele you ever thought of actually going in toward television as far as writing or even making something uh, as far as film wise you mean original stuff uh as in like you know a, like shorts or anything like that uh i mean I, the thing was i was i wrote and acted in a short that went to the sundance Sundance movie festival which is once a year it's in park city utah and that was in insane what goes on there that's like a big marketplace where big movie companies come and pick up independent movies to be distributed and so i did one of those independent movies but i haven't really uh i don't do that much i mean once in a while there was there's a, sh a website called funny or die are you familiar with that yes yeah so i've done a couple of things for them where people were like hey wayne will you be in my project and i'll do that kind of thing but mainly i do like you know little work and like you know in movies i'll have like a scene and like Step Brothers I was in. I was in a movie called Legally Blonde. I was in a movie called 40-Year-Old Virgin. I was in a movie called Knocked Up. Uh, there was another one, 50 First Dates I was in. There was actually, I know you are you seem to be a little more into like maybe the horror genre. There was the same movie I was in. Well, not insane, but curious movie I was in called Jack Frost. Now, there's a couple Jack Frost. <laughs> yes, there's the, the whole Christmassy, lovey-dovey one, and then there's Jack Frost, a horror one that just kills everybody. Right, right. I'm in the Michael Keaton lovey-dovey one not the, <laughs> yeah. the other one <laughs> not the other one <laughs> that one was crazy but you know it was interesting to see <laughs> yeah yeah but the, did they come out about the same time God, i don't remember the, uh, the exact year but uh i know they made a sequel off it too <laughs> they did that's interesting that's interesting yeah they did they did make a sequel i'm pretty sure that yeah i'm not sure about the reviews but uh, that's another in interesting sequel to see as well it is you would recommend that uh, would i recommend it no so that's just you know, so it's fun being in those movies, and uh, you know, when whenever those movies play or somebody buys it on video demand, I get you know, I get a little, believe me, a little cut of it. So that's kind of nice to get those, you know, 
know, you go to the mailbox and you get a check, you know, for something you did maybe 15 years ago. It's really, it's pretty sweet. So that's why whenever I get one of those movie jobs, I'm always like, wow, thank you, thank you. That's very nice. No, yeah, for the longest time, uh, either an actor doesn't get paid as much for what they do, even if it's just a small part or they don't get paid at all, depending on the situation. Right, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, I get a little something. Sometimes there's a, something called a low-budget movie where you get paid less than, you know, the scale of for the for that movie. But it's not really, it's not so much I'm doing it for the money. I just like being in movies, especially because I was such a fan when I was a kid of watching these things, whether it was Oliver Stone's Platoon or, you know, I was a big fan of, uh, there was a movie called Braveheart, which won uh, the best picture. I'm going to say 1995. I think I got that right. Um, that Mel Gibson uh, directed. Did you ever see that thing? Well, Braveheart, yeah, definitely. What did you think of that? Oh, I thought it was really good. You liked it? Oh, okay. okay. I liked it. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of been my uh, that's been my my path to the movies, and then lo and behold, I get to talk to Mike in Missouri all about it. It's pretty fun. Since everything's all digital now, what are your thoughts on that? Now that all film was uh, has majority has gone to toward YouTube, basically everything's streaming on the internet rather than hard copy. Oh, you mean as far as like a DVD? Yeah, gone to DVD. You know, from from upgrading from VHS all the way up to DVD and so forth. But I think it's good. I think the quality of uh, video on demand that you, you would get through Netflix or through Roku or through, you know, Apple, what do they call that? Apple, can't remember what that's called. Um, Apple TV is much better than I could get even on uh, DVD. It's like, it's almost, I would say it's close to Blu-ray level of it. And you don't have to hold on to the, uh, you know, you don't have to have a shelf full of movies. Like, uh, I remember when I was a kid, we had something called eight-track tapes. I'm sure you're not old enough to know what that is. Oh, indeed, I do. Yeah, okay, so we had eight-track tapes, and then, you know, cassette tapes, and then the CDs, and now people basically buy music and just put it right onto their iPod or onto their iTunes or something like that, so you don't even need a physical, so the th same exact thing is happening in film now, and I, I think it's good, especially for someone who loves movies. Yeah, but it's also a really good way to steal a movie, rather than going to a theater and filming the film, now they go to the theater filming the film and stick it on DVD and sell it. Wait, are you saying people who buy DVDs are stupid? No, no, I'm saying the people that illegally film the film and stick it on DVD and sell it. Yeah, but now it's like you can get like the pristine actual version as opposed to somebody with a video camera pointed in a theater. Like, yeah. you know, you can get that for whatever. But people are still doing that though. They're still Something just, like that. They're just buying that up and rather than waiting for it to go on DVD or Blu-ray. Right, now that's true. Look, there's piracy is a huge Huge, Mike, you're 100% correct. I mean, piracy is an issue, but, I mean, the amount of revenue that comes in from video on demand, uh, Netflix, uh, you know, pay cable, regular cable, all of that is huge. It's a huge revenue stream, and to tell you the truth, one of the biggest one is from overseas. Like, those movies really, they like a, the Hollywood producers, excuse me, studios make so much money from that. So, yeah, piracy is definitely a problem, but, I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, no. it's like with music. Like, I know people, a lot of people steal their music, too. And, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, still Lady Gaga or, you know, Taylor Swift or Beyonce. Any of these artists still make a lot of money, even though people are stealing a portion of it. I don't know what percentage. What percentage do you think it is? Oh, uh, jeez. I could even give you one. And some even some artists are okay with it, and some artists are against it. That's that's a thing. So, what do you think? You think it's? Uh, are you basically on the fence on this, or do you think are you against it, or you for it? Against stealing or for stealing? I'm gonna go. I'm against stealing. I know that's insane. Yeah. I know it's. Very controversial. But some are, some of these artists have been interviewed saying that you know they don't mind people taking the song and uh, it's okay. To, it, it, well, you know they're taking your song, man. They're taking it for free. I know. I mean, I mean, look. I mean, there's like stand up of mine and that's on YouTube that I give away for free. I don't know. It's that weird kind of world of like, is this a promotional tool? Or are you actually trying to make money? But I still think uh, you shouldn't be stealing. You should try to buy things. But I understand that some people steal. Yeah, well, you can't make any money, man, if your stuff is getting stolen. Uh, uh, but I'm <laughs> saying, but it's, as a percentage, I feel like it's small. Not small. No. I mean, significant, but it's not the majority of stuff. 
Yeah, it's not like in general majority life, but things have improved as far as security wise. Things have improved since I then. I feel like no matter how high they, this I might we may disagree with the, with this mic, but I feel like no matter what kind of anti theft stuff they put on those computer kids, they figure a way around it. That's just been my. Oh yeah. That's just my sense of the whole thing. Well, even it's even the biggest companies in the world has gotten hacked. That even through video game consoles and everything else. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. It's like so I feel like there's no there's no foolproof way to do it. But I think part of it is to keep the price of the movies and the music low enough for people just like, Oh, I'd rather just pay the dollar ninety nine from Netflix and rent this movie for a couple of days than dealing with, you know, some illegal thing and suddenly I have a virus on my computer or something like that. that's my guess. I'm you know, I'm not really an expert in this field, so uh but that would be my guess of it. No, but even now the CDs are starting to uh, go down in value. You can get a CD now for like ten bucks. <laughs> it used to be seventeen bucks. A lot of them are in retail wise, it'd be like sixteen dollars, depending on what you get. Yeah, they're definitely. That's what I'm talking about. Like the market will push down the prices of those, or people just won't end up buying those CDs. Do you think DVDs actually going to rank up to a whole new format? Because even now DVDs are five bucks a piece now. No, I think it's the end of it. I think it's the end of all of that. I think, except for the like collectors that will get like a DVD, but for the most part, I think it'll be like the way like iTunes works, mm. your iPod works, except that it'll have movies too. Yeah, I mean, otherwise DVDs will be like collectible compared to vinyl. Yes, exactly. Mike, one hundred percent correct. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And there's people that want it like that, but it does take up space, and, you know, it can be on a cloud somewhere, and you can just rent it. Yeah, that's the best way, to rent it, and then, of course, if it's an older film, uh, go ahead and, you can buy it for between three to five bucks, anywhere. (laughs) Exactly, so it's, uh, I don't know, I'm not that, I'm not that worried about it. I, um, I think it's good. I think it, there's a lot of uh, great films still being made. And, you know, we're coming up on, I mean, what are we in? We're in 2013 now. So in a couple yeah. years, I mean, we're coming up on the 100th anniversary of a lot of fantastic films. I think Birth of a Nation is, what, 1915? So, I mean, yes, yeah, controversial film, but certainly a historic film. And then, you know, we're going to get on to those silent movies. And, you know, movies have been around 100 years, like yeah. in a big way. And everything about it. You gotta appreciate it. I try to. I try to. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, I mean, I like Tarantino, and I also like, you know, Frank, Frank Capra, and uh, that guy. You know, that era movie. It's like every decade has a, a certain era. Like, everyone kept doing remakes out the ass. It was nothing but remakes for like, almost, like, the entire year. And then, like, uh, two years later, then it was, like, prequels, remakes, chick flicks, and a couple horrors. Yeah, well, I think there's gonna be a lot of, uh, uh, sequels this year just so you know just be ready for it oh well, there's a lot of drama ones now uh especially of this year that uh, that's been booming and there's a lot of action uh, like cop films now give me an example of a couple cop films well new ones coming uh, you know snitch with the rock i don't know snitch is it with the it's a brand new film that's coming. That's going around in this year. Right. I, I don't know that one yet but i know die hard is coming they're doing oh yeah die hard. i'm looking forward to seeing that you say that again? I am looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. So which one of those do you like? Do you like just the original? Or? I like all of them. If, 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 like I said, if it's a remake, if it's, it's got to be really good. I mean, none of this whole thing. Oh, okay, they're doing this completely what, what shouldn't be in the original. But certain remakes are really good. Wow. Can I write that down? That certain remakes are pretty good? Yeah. What? Certain remakes are pretty good. That's right. All right. It's hard to argue with. It's hard to argue with. Did you see Skyfall? Are you trying to argue with me? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> he said it's hard to argue. Well, argue with me already. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just, <laughs> I, just an interesting thing to say. Like, Do it. Certain remakes are pretty good. Okay, he's going to write this in his now blog tomorrow. Watch. Uh, you're going to see. Skyfall? See. Yeah. Oh, I saw some of it. I didn't see the whole thing, no. Uh, are you a fan of the Bond era? Not per se, but I do appreciate it. Not per se. Okay. All right. Have you said I'm not into the James Bond, but I do appreciate the the work that they did. Well, all right. Any other questions? You ready? Do it. Oh, you mentioned you had a festival happening. Oh, it's just a film festival I do with uh, comedians, and they pick films that they love, and we screen them here in California. It's a really fun, like, really fun event. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We do it over four days, and uh, have different comedians. 
comedians pick movies that they love or were influenced by. The only thing was they can't be in the movie. Can't be in the movie. Right. So it's not like a movie they did, the movie they love. It would be like you showing Dawn of the Dead or something like that. Yeah, yeah. What are you showing? I, I just, I don't show anything. You don't show anything? No, I just pick the comedian. Well, <laughs> well come, man. What? Well, why don't you? This is my own festival. It, so? It's it's so? It's not about me. Then choose yours for like, in the second category or something. You don't have to actually or do it last. I don't know. I, let me let me think about it. There might be, <laughs> I, you know, there would probably be some, I don't know, maybe, you know, Annie Hall or some Woody Allen movie or something. Yeah. Something's got to influence you. Show something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did win Best Picture. Yeah, don't have to be a winner. It's okay. All right, any other questions? Mm, go ahead and plug in any other web addresses that you may have or anything that you want to promote right now. Uh, my uh, website, WayneFetterman.com. And if you're out in California and want to see uh, some comedians show some movies, I'll give you some of the movies that they pick. Um, one of them is Crimes and Misdemeanors. One of them is Dr. Strangelove, speaking of Kubrick. One of them is Breaking Away. One of them is the Coen Brothers, uh, wait, what's the, Raising Arizona. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> uh, one of them is The Dirty Dozen. Oh, yeah. And can't think of the last one. Uh, yeah, so we see all those movies. It's, we're going to have a good time. If you happen to be out in California, uh, February 28th to March 3rd. There you go. Wayne Fetterman, actor, author, musician, everything else. Exactly.